Hey, friends, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and Paige is back. Paige, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, it's it's fall. It's pretty. I'm cozy. Uh, and I we 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 talk about uh, maybe controversial stuff, but we we talk about how to sort of find a, a middle ground without confessing uh, or without sacrificing our confession of faith. Uh, we call it mind the gap. And today we're going to do uh, something nice and and uh, fall bound that's right around the corner, right? Yep. Uh, one of my favorite holidays that's not like Christmas or Easter. <laughs> Right. Like you almost have to sort of put that that asterisk on there as a Christian. Otherwise, you're going to get glared at by somebody. But we like Halloween. So let's talk Mm -hmm. about it. So like, I don't know if you know a lot about the origins of Halloween, but I certainly yeah, I certainly didn't until like I started looking it up for this, actually. And Halloween dates back to an ancient Celtic festival called Samhain. And um, it was the Celtic New Year. So that day marked the end of the summer months and kind of welcomed in the colder months. And the Celts believed that this was like on the night before their New Year, so October 31st, that the lines between the world of the living and dead became blurred. Okay. So this is not something that is Christian then, at least right now so what you're telling me right now is to stay away from it because the second commandment is actually very clear here that uh we're not to go poking at that kind of stuff that that not only are we not to misuse god's name but that also means that we're not to go uh calling other things uh for for help like those kinds of spirits so right how do i get my candy (laughs) how do you get your candy and eat it too yeah. Um, I mean, and honestly, if, if this is just a thing that we need to stay away from that, that's also an, an argument that we can make, but let's, let's actually look at all of the history of it then. So it, it hasn't just stayed as Scottish holiday. Um, and I know that right. because we have pumpkins and not kilts. Right. And they actually used to carve um, gourds instead of pumpkins, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. Learning I know. Sorts. So, yeah, I learned a lot when I was doing some research for this. So, um, we actually, as Christianity gained a foothold in like those Celtic regions, um, the church leaders attempted to reframe this um, New Year holiday as a Christian celebration. So um, in the ninth, like there was an attempt by Pope Boniface in the fifth century to kind of um, Christianize this and he attempted to move the festival, which didn't really go over well. Um, so yeah. in the ninth century, You'll learn that in church work, yeah. Yeah. Um, in in the ninth century, Pope Gregory did a little bit better job. Actually, he did the job that we all know and remember today, is that he moved the celebration um, back to, instead of to May, where the other Pope moved it, he moved it back to um, November 1st and declared that All Saints Day. And then the... Um, night before our Halloween, he declared as All Hallows Eve. So that's where the Christianity aspect comes in. And so we turned it into All Saints Day. Got you. I, I, there's there's sort of some back and forth about this. Um, there's a lot of sort of criticism that Christianity sort of adopts pagan holidays. And there's, there's some accusation that happens at Christmas, although that one's not as true. This one's very yeah. clearly, we stole the pagan's holiday and we made it ours. Um, yeah. And I kind of like it as a Christian. Um, I'm actually okay <laughs> with that. Jesus conquers the power of the devil. And so dark holidays then turn into light ones. Uh, I, I, I sort of like that, that uh, as Christians, we simply then go out into the world and live as those who are redeemed and made holy and made new. Uh, So why wouldn't uh, your holidays become our holidays too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what we did. And like, um, actually, we didn't have Halloween in America until like the early 19th century. So it's still a fairly new American, like as we know it today of like going and trick or treating and stuff. So um, it's kind of interesting just to see how like we took this and it kind of came with everyone who came over to this new world and just spread it like that as well. Right. Let's talk a little bit too about what it turned into because All Saints Day is my favorite holiday. Um, I, I, I will go a little bit controversial on that. I like All Saints Day the most out of all of the feast days of the church here. Uh, so what do we know ab- about that? Ooh, I actually don't know much about All Saints Day. 
well. It's it's the day that we we recognize uh, those who have gone to be with Christ. Um, it, it's it's a proclamation of the victory over death in, in a very concrete way. Um, and so different churches will have a lot of different uh, sort of you know little things that they'll do. They'll remember those who have fallen asleep in Christ our Lord this year. Uh, but I, I absolutely love All Saints Day because it is the victory over the grave in the most sort of in your face way possible. Because these are our loved ones who are alive with Christ. And so to me, this is always where I draw the line with this. Uh, what is Christ? do to sin, to death, and the, to power of the devil? Well, on the cross, he conquers them. He, he grants those then under their power, life and rescue. Uh, and so for, for us then dwelling in this side of glory, when we come up against the power of the devil, we have a risen Lord. When we come up against that last great enemy, death, we have a cross where death was undone. Um, and so to me, All Saints Day, this is this is where it is at. Um, and it, it really does actually then shape how it, it is that, that we as Christians can start to look at Halloween itself, right? Because there are bad things you can do on Halloween. There, there are commandments. There's 10 of them very specifically um, and, and three that directly apply to how we relate to God that shape what you can do on Halloween the same way that they would shape what you should do on Christmas, the same way that they would shape what you do on the 4th of July or any other just normal Tuesday. Um, so we're, we're not saying Halloween, just do whatever you want. Uh, but at the same time, if Halloween is connected to All Saints Day, what does this mean? I mean, it means that we're celebrating something more than ourselves. Like we are celebrating an institution that was actually given to us by God instead of just going on and saying, oh, this is just some pagan holiday and we're just trying to Christianize it. We actually have a reason for celebrating. Yeah, Christ is risen from the grave, and, and we'll celebrate that every Lord's Day. And some will point out that that have sort of an application here. We'll, we'll celebrate the birth of Christ on Christmas. We'll celebrate uh, All Saints Day and the victory over the grave that we have. Now, when it comes then to how we practice Halloween um, or don't, uh, Christians get a little bit heated, right? So, so let's mm -hmm. walk through that just a little bit while we got some time. Okay, so some Christians flat out reject Halloween. They're like, it's a glorified day for the devil, like it's pagan worship, we should stay as far away from it as possible, we don't want anything to do with it, it's not holy. But as we just discussed, like it certainly is because it's our All Saints Day. And so that's why some Christians more than not will accept it and be like, yes, this is kind of like, there's a secular side to this holiday called Halloween and we go out and get candy and it's fun and dress up and whatever but we remember like what we actually celebrate for the all saints and it kind of gives like we're called to be like in this world and not of the world but that doesn't mean that we can't have fun in the world as long as you know you're being Christian about it. Right. So if you, if your fun practice on Halloween is satanic rituals, don't do that thing. That's yeah, bad. That's not allowed. That's not allowed on yeah. Halloween or any other day. But at the same time, we as Christians are also taught to, to laugh at the devil. Um, Luther has just a, this very famous joke that uh, has 12 year old humor, which is probably why it's very famous that every once in a while he likes to fart in the, the general direction of the devil. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, I think maybe an excuse for him to let one go. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it, it's this recognition that the devil has no power over us. He might be a lion uh, prowling about seeking those whom he can devour, but to you, he has no teeth. You wear the whole armor of God. And so if your, your Halloween is then dressing up as a mockery of everything that would otherwise be dark and getting candy and having fun because the devil has no power over you, well, thanks be to God, that's, that's living in your baptism. And that, that's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. So uh, when it comes into Halloween, uh, what what should we think about as we, we go forward then? I mean, we should just think about like what you said, we are redeemed by Christ. We know who we are in our baptism and we are allowed to have that little bit of mockery of all these things that should be scary, but really aren't because Christ has redeemed us. He's redeemed the world and devil hath no power over us. And uh, yeah, so... But All the right. big question is, what's your favorite candy? Ooh, um, I'm going uh, Kit Kat bar. How about you? <sighs> I would say either Kit Kat or Reese's. We can be friends. Yes. Those well, that's great. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Paige, thanks for hanging out on the drive to school. Have a good one. Yeah, you too.